So here I am today in Southern California in the desert. You can see all around me it is just flat. There's no trees. And you can also tell that this is a recent area that was on fire. The desert does burn. And the desert is littered with little black and pock marks all over. Little isolated fires. This one, maybe 10 acres, maybe 15 acres. It was put out rather easily compared to the other blazes. But this one could have been a bigger one. If the wind was blowing a different direction, if it was blowing the other way, if it was a little bit hotter, Today's a comfortable 97 degrees here in the uh, desert. But as you probably heard, California's answer to the wildfires is simply to rake the forests. Rake the forests. Only 35% of California is forest. 25% of California is the desert. And the desert catches on fire nicely. One of the problems with the California desert and wildfires is something called tumbleweeds. You've probably seen tumbleweeds just rolling over, over, over in westerns, on television, at the movies. They're dry little bushes that are conveniently round. Well, when they catch fire and it's windy, they continue to roll, 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 roll. And they will roll and spread fire and embers for a very long distance. Here comes another truck. He waved. So the problem with the desert, if the desert starts here in Central California and it goes through Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and then into Texas. Here comes another truck. That's a large swath of America that's in desert. A large swath. And there is not enough manufacturing capacity to make rakes for that kind of land mass. That is a huge amount of land. So it's not about raking forests. Oh, two more trucks. Here we go. I'm going to wave, see if they can wave back. First one didn't, the third, the second guy, he was cool. Wave right at me. With only 35% of Californian forest, what about the rest of the state that's on fire? So the solution is not raking the forest. Desert, what are you gonna start raking? It's dirt and really tall, small weeds. It's just, it's the desert. The answer is a little more complicated. Another truck. Will he wave? Hey, he waved. All right. Woohoo! Next time I'm gonna try to get him to honk their horn. That'll be awesome. I want to talk about soil moisture. I think soil moisture is more relevant to the conversation than raking the forests. The current soil moisture here in California from the average of the previous century is zero to 30% of the average. Here, where I'm at right now, the soil moisture is zero to 30% of what it used to be in the previous century. Zero to 30%. There's not a lot of soil moisture. And I understand that this is, you know, where I'm at now, the Central Valley, the San Joaquin Valley, there's like three growing seasons here. You know, I can go 10 miles in almost either direction and find like an orange orchard or avocado orchard. <laughs> All right! He honked the horn! Yes! <laughs> Sorry, I'm such a kid. So, with the typical rainfall, and it's not necessarily the rainfall here in the Central Valley, it's the snow that falls on the Sierra Mountains during the year. If you look that direction, on a clear day, you would see Yosemite. You would see the uh, Sierra Mountains. But you can't see them because of all the crap in the air. You don't have falling ash as much these days, but you do, you do have a lot of smoke. The smoke's still there. Most of the farms here get their water from the uh, snowpack in the Sierras. More, more snows, 
the more ice pack there is and the slower it and then it melts during the spring and summer flooding the San Joaquin Valley through an intricate series of channels that goes directly to the farms. If you want to see what the San Joaquin Valley looked like, I've got a video on the topic called the Kern National Wildlife Refuge field trip. But it's not snowing as much in the Sierras anymore. So there's not enough snowpack. The moisture in the ground becomes less and less and less. So remember now we have zero to 30% of the normal soil moisture that we had here in Southern California from the previous century. <laughs> They're like children too. Oregon, you can look at any satellite map on Google and you'll see a patchwork of clearing where Oregon cut has really good forest management. If you look at uh, Portland and then look westward toward Cannon Beach, there's a patch, it's just like little blocks all chunked up where they've been clear cutting, clearing brush, stacking brush, hauling brush away. I mean, Oregon has really good forest management. It's still on fire. So does Washington State. It's still on fire. So it's not raking the forest or forest management. But it wouldn't do any good anyway because it's not the forest, it's the water. And the West has always had water problems. So in Oregon and Washington where they have really good forest management, and you can always say, say well, maybe California doesn't. I mean, the desert is burning here in California and the fires go all the way to the Canadian border. And I really don't stop there. It's not forestry management. It's not raking the forest. Besides, again, 35% of California is uh, forest. So why is everything else on fire? Like the desert. Well, what other forests are in America that are not burning? And why aren't they burning? What other places in America has lots of forest and why aren't they on fire? So this photo here was taken from an aircraft on long final going into Charleston, West Virginia, the capital of West Virginia. Note there's trees as far as the eye can see. Charleston's in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, which go from Maine all the way to Georgia. Do you hear about a lot of wildfires in West Virginia? West Virginia is 78% forest. So percentage-wise, West Virginia has more than twice the forests. There's no fire, big, huge wildfires like there are here in Maine, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, or Georgia. Do it, do it, oh! Let down, let down, sorry. I'll let you all guys, he didn't talk the one. Hey man, they're doing, you know, these guys that's coming back and forth, they're hauling food. They deserve our respect. Cute story. There was uh, about a couple miles down the road from here, there was one tomato truck that turned over once upon a time. They just left all, they just took, got a bulldozer, pushed all the tomatoes off the side of the road. We had awesome tomatoes for dinner that night because they just left it. I stole some tomatoes from the truck wreck. I'm a terrible person. But what's the soil moisture? of West Virginia. Let's look at the soil moisture of West Virginia. Compared to the previous century, West Virginia's soil moisture is anywhere from 70 to 100 percent. So West Virginia at 78 percent uh, forest, it has twice the percentage of forest as California does. In fact, West Virginia is the third most forested state. Where's their wildfires? Where are they at? I mean, they, they have wildfires and they get lightning strikes, just like everybody else does. But they don't have this. They don't have what's going on in California. They don't have cities burning to the ground like Oregon. So again, I think the answer is soil moisture. And that's what a lot of other scientists with really prestigious degrees and insanely funded laboratories also tell us. And this is the data that the farmers depend on to plant their crops. Well, this field's gonna have soil moisture of this, so we better plant this as opposed to this. This is not some sort of voodoo science, this is agriculture we're talking about, and still, soil moisture is very, very important. And again, West Virginia has 70 
to 100% of the soil moisture today that they had over the previous 100 years. California, 0 to 30%. 0 to 30 Kind of bleak. Kind of bleak. So going back to that picture of uh, outside of Charleston, West Virginia, right out of the side of the state capitol, it's trees as far as the eye can see. Rolling hills and rivers and whatever. And yes, this is the desert. And yes, the desert does catch on fire. But we're having a lot more fires than usual compared to the previous century. The soil is much drier than it was over the previous century. So what about the historical uh, evidence of wildfires? Well, giant redwoods and sequoias and bristlecone pines all here in California, if you look at their tree rings using dendrochronology, you can tell the frequency of wildfires in that area. And using that science of tree rings, dendrochronology, you can tell that the wildfires are getting more and more and more, not less and less and less. So that's another example of what we're doing in terms of climate change to this uh, world. We are endangering it. Not a lack of forest raking. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing on the channel, please subscribe. And until next time, I'll be your lab partner. Take care. Bye-bye. off the flaps. Bugs!